Hi, welcome to this episode of Ramblin' Down Rainbow Road. I am Gracie Bowen, and this is my guest, Stephanie, say your last name. Looning. Looning. Um, Stephanie is an artist working out of Dresden, out of Dresden, who is in Columbus for her second or third time? The second time. Second time. Um, I had the pleasure of hanging out with Stephanie her first time here when she was uh, had a show with Elsa Ranz Gumby at Kim and Harkins Gallery, and that was a beautiful show. She's back again for another show, another beautiful show. And you also did a demo at the um, the art festival, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself and your work and stuff? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Also, this is another drinking edition of Rumble Down Rainbow Road, mm-hmm. and we are drinking whatever Stephanie goes, yeah. we're sponsored yeah. by Lyman Kugels. <laughs> Very German. Or something, I don't even know. Talk about my artwork, I have no idea where to start. <laughs> ah, that counts! <laughs> that counts. What, because of the eye? No, because you oh. just did the expressive mouth thing. Ah, oh, yes, yes. so <laughs> mean! <laughs> yeah, we're just facing you being different. I didn't even know you said it. I thought I'd be more like this. With love. When you discuss it, we're actually say, desperate for alcohol. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 because we were in our last year. Talk about my artwork. So, we're like I. Yeah. I work very experimental. Before I studied art, I studied scenic painting, so I'm artisanal, perfectly trained. We had to copy all kinds of stuff, old master paintings, everything. So I can basically paint anything with my hands. So I have everything under control when I use my paintbrush or the pencil, but I'm not interested in that. That's why I, uh, yeah. <laughs> when I started studying art, I was working lots of, uh, a lot of stuff that I was doing a lot of stuff with sculptures and they deal a lot of, with uh, volumes and stuff I was grinding down a whole chair for example to see how the chair transformed from a huge uh, from a real chair into sawdust mm. and then I could uh, move the sawdust all over the place and for the exhibition for example I, I took all the sawdust I broomed it, broomed it? Swept. swept it together then I uh, used the sawdust to write chair the word chair on the floor with the sawdust that, those were one of my first works, and then I tried to paint again, but I painted really fast gesture-like paintings, really big ones. They were always located on the floor, just like in scenic paintings, but they were really quickly made, like in two minutes. I painted the whole painting with a scenic painting paintbrush, so you have like a six feet long handle, and then you just... Oh, wow. Yeah, mm. and they were... So, and back then, just like you said, I didn't understand at all what, I mean, I was doing that, you know, but I, as soon as the paint was dry, I wasn't satisfied at all, because I thought, hmm, that wasn't the truth for me, you know, that wasn't the essence of what I tried to say, so, and I got really frustrated with painting, you know, and then I tried all kinds of stuff, I poured the paint on the paper, I threw my paintbrush on the canvas, I just tried to get paint on some kind of surface. And then all of a sudden I came up with the idea of um, coloring water and put it into these ice cube containers and freeze it. And then I started to play around with ice cubes, tiny ice cubes. And then I realized, also I realized when I did these paintings on the huge canvases, that the process interested me more than the actual result. So and then I did start to get the, uh, to do these huge actions in uh, public spaces. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, before I forget to make it clear that we are with Melissa Bugly Woods. Say hi, Melissa. Hello. Step Cheers. into that light. Step into that light. Um, and we are in Melissa's studio again. Experimental. Um, uh, so, yeah, there will be a link to Stephanie's work and other relevant links to the conversation in the t- <laughs> tons of offering. Wow, in the description, <laughs> in the description for this episode. I could hold something up. <laughs> you could, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's let them a... imagine, because I don't, I want, I don't want to have like the slides of the artist talk kind of a thing. Just like if you're curious, <laughs> I just seek it out and write it. my name. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Put finger paint on the last name on the surface. Um, let's just get right into that gameplay. 
Oh gosh. So we ran one course because Stephanie hasn't played many video games, let alone Mario Kart before. Um, but we are we are sensitive to all of Sam's bubble group. Um, rambling down Rainbow Road. Mm -hmm. I try to come up with a fun name for the show. I just don't know. Do you like it? I do, and I just realized you let me win. I didn't. No, I honestly, I, I swear to God, I will never ever let people win. Like if they, because that's just like such a bummer. Like okay. if they beat me, they're gonna beat me, honestly. Okay, good. Yeah, I would never. That's, that's like, not worth my life. No way. Um, press, press. No, press. I love the name because it just rolls and rolls. Like. And I feel like I feel like it's also. Oh wait a second. Which one? I feel like it's also kind of oh we're flipped. Do we want to switch controllers so we're right and right and left and left? Right and right. Does that make okay. sense? Sure. Um. Where's me? Because it's also kind of like. Is that oh, X or you know what? I'll go to my left. That's all. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Well, it's right down. Left so left. I'm the left person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Shadow. Oh man, this is Wario. Hi. If you, I kind of like that. If you want to look at your stats, press the minus button or the reverse button. I want to do the wheel, but where is the enter? Um, you're good. You have it selected, so it's not a super intuitive interface. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you hit that joystick right, then you're gonna be able to select your last thing, and then. But I want to press enter now right. on the last thing. It's selected. Hit that joystick right, and then. But then yeah, it always switch to the right, airplane. Press that right to, button. But I want to. You have all of those things in the view. Awesome. Right, 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 right button. <laughs> like. I picked up that episode thing. Too. Yeah, that sounds great, right? So you get to choose the choice of design. I'm a fan. It makes a lot of sense, right? Like. Yeah, I kind of. Like it's it does feel like more like a. Right start, okay. Guttural sort of expression than like oh yeah I get it that's too many syllables it's so, it's like a whole sentence yeah. True. Once he's gonna talk so much that I'm gonna move the webcam. <laughs> Don't even worry. <laughs> when does we the, shouldn't have little. I need the makeup artist show up. Yeah. I'm just gonna take that. No, one. this is all natural, baby. Hey. Next time I see you, main girl, I'll have like flattering eyes. So <laughs> That's true investment. <laughs> the blue. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. I don't mind. Well, no, I probably don't want to play the game. Use that joystick, baby. Ah, I don't even know where the streets are. Baby. Oh, baby. Um, I'm trying to think of something that I can talk about for a minute that you don't have to listen to so that you can get a feel for the game. <laughs> Do I need to? Do you need to get a feel for it? Yeah. No. Not if you don't want to. I don't I just really want be to. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, I probably will never play it again. Hi, welcome so. to Rambling Down Rainbow Road, where I put my dear friends through really uncomfortable experiences. <laughs> ah, exactly, mental. <laughs> How do you, are you excited for the World Cup at all? Is it what? For the World Cup? Uh, you uh, mentioned it earlier. I didn't just say that because you Yeah, were Melissa's... Future husband mentioned it. I for totally forgot that it's going on. Oh, I'm excited. And they uh, he told me that Germany just lost to us. So. Uh, yeah. No way, really? Sorry. Damn. Damn. To who? Mexico, I think. Wow. Oh, wow. They're really good. Um, I I that's one of those things that I was like looking forward to watching in bars and pubs. Yeah, me too. In the middle of the day and stuff, but I just forgot. And it was just too late. Yeah. Home oh, oh gosh. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so Stephanie, I don't know much about like your life and your history and stuff. Do you want to share anything? No is a total no. <laughs> Drink! Yes! Oh, man. <laughs> it's so not fair! I'm just desperate. Do we have to chose it? Because I'm going to lose. Oh, my life. Well, you're asking this big pants. question. I have no idea what to ask. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's I have no question. idea where to start with that question. That's a bad question. It's like, uh, hey, how are you? And then I think, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a real good 
Secret mixture since oh, I work a lot for risk okay. restorers, okay. so I am pretty. Oh, so it is perfectly artisanal trained. I'm also perfectly technical trained. Oh. Technical training, so it is like archival. I mean, it has to be, right? Yeah, I, I do okay. lots of experience in my studio mm -hmm. before I actually start working on certain projects, and I always start very playful. I always come up with ideas in my bathtub or all kinds of places. <laughs> But then I really get serious about it, and then I start to turn it into my mostly into a PC game. Mm -hmm. So, like the event of the work being made is as important as the result of the work in your process. In 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 uh, oh gosh, Finnish. Uh, <sighs> no, I just uh, thought that uh, the first idea is always pretty playful. Or when I discover a material, I always look for materials that keep a uh, capture like a physical pro process inside themselves so those are materials that i can use because i like the materials that are able to transform themselves like ice or wax or foam mm -hmm. or soap bubbles stuff like that mm -hmm. Oh, you've done painting with soap bubbles with like pigment in soap bubbles on paper yes yes yeah. yes so those are like drawings to me because mm -hmm. they have these uh, very certain outlines and stuff and they really keep Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, as I said, I studied this. I started this scene of painting. Before that, I was a sign maker, and I worked as a sign maker for several years. Right. But I always followed my. I always uh, chose the most uh, creative way <laughs> in everything I did. Because uh, I graduated from tenth grade, then I did my apprenticeship in sign making. Oh, is that a thing in German education? Is the apprenticeship? Yeah, if you don't have like a high school degree, uh, degree, then that's the, that's the way to go. Like you, do an apprenticeship, like a but three year, it's a split into a practical and a theoretical part, yeah. and then you basically start working for a company right away, Weird. which I did, and then you go to wow. a school where you get the theoretical, uh, background. But then we started to draw a lot in that school. We didn't start. That was the program. We, draw drew a lot. So then I applied for graphic design even at an art academy and then they didn't accept me when I was 18 and I was pretty pissed. And, uh, and then I thought, I'm never going to touch a pencil ever again. Oh boy. But anyway, yeah. I finished my apprenticeship and then I kept on working. But even after the first month of that apprenticeship, I was already sick of it. I, uh, thought I'm, I was so disappointed because I went to school for so long. Yeah, who played me? Dude, maybe don't play, because you're in first right now. <gasps> Ooh, oh, but I better yeah, don't do right. anything. <laughs> I better just drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I just left. So, <laughs> I better don't interfere. <laughs> just like in <laughs> my art <laughs> <laughs> I just let the universe <laughs> take over. <laughs> um, how did you, how did you, like, discover, because I ascribed your work to, like, the way I describe your work is like letting nature take its course in the making of the work. Is that a fair thing to say? Uh, yes. I think Chet always said like uh, she lets the universe take over, and of course in English that sounds really beautiful. In German, it's a bit harder to express the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the English language captures so much, you know. Yeah. In Germany, it's always you need to keep to the three words. You exclude a lot of things if you say one sentence. Oh, so okay. in English you can kind of, if you say she lets the universe take over, that basically captures so much. Oh, Johnny, yeah. you can say that that was cool. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's why it's almost easier for me to speak about my art in English than in German. Really? Oh. Yeah, because German is so minimized, you know, because uh, every word is so particular. It only needs a very particular thing. And in English you kind of, you say something and you know that it 
like in their a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 It's it's broader, but more broad. Yeah. Like the context. And then German is so You know I'm being so real. Don't play this game right now. I'm so curious that you're doing really well. <laughs> Why not doing anything? Because the computer, computer, computer plays on. Act like you're on. playing and win and with the play. algorithm. <laughs> um, and then if you do win, it'll I'll feel bad because then the computer won't beat me. Um, yeah. Just kidding. I'm not. I'm not scared of computer. Uh, <laughs> there's got to be a, a word for like xenophobic against computers and AI and stuff. That word is gonna come around. I should coin that word. Um, I hate it. So, so what was that process of like discovery and that part of your work? I mean, the whole thing of uh, I think playing with this physical, what do you call it? I mean, like ice and foam and stuff, where you get surprised by the result yourself. Mm. That's the real. That's the point that interests me. <gasps> Nope, doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I want to be surprised by the result myself, and I want to be confronted with the assessments, with my own assessments, and all the assessments were all training. And that's what I like so much, because I know how to compose a painting, you know, I know how to paint a painting that everybody loves, and that everyone would buy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so trained in that, I, I just can't stop doing that, you know. But uh, that's not interesting. For me. <laughs> what? Oh, all these so words. You know? <laughs> so that's why I ended up with these process stuff, kind of to trick myself. That's on the on the end, I get back to painting, but uh, through a very because uh, first I only did these huge public actions, and I was totally anti gallery stuff, anti museum stuff. I only thought I just do temporary stuff. Nobody can buy anything, you know. They ju can just go to the opening, then you see what's happened, and then it's gone. Nobody can buy it. And I was totally anti, anti, anti. Mm -hmm. Why were you so anti? I don't know. Because I didn't want to be the average mm -hmm. <laughs> artist. I didn't want to go with the flow, I guess. I feel that. Yeah. And yeah. then what changed? I don't know. After a while, I thought uh, I have to open a door for the audience to be able to understand what I'm working on. Because oh. I, cause I was, uh, yeah, because I had a lot of talks and stuff with people, you know, because there was all this audience and like talking to me. And then after a while, I understood that okay. I'm so anti because I don't really open a door for anyone to understand or to get closer to the content yeah. of my artwork. And then, yeah. Wait, can you actually play this way? Okay. Thank you. So what was the feedback you were getting that made you like realize that? That's interesting. I don't really know actually, but I also realized myself uh, to be anti. That's totally shit and hard. You know? Really? It is. And I. I How do you mean? Uh, because that's no real art. When you're an artist, you have to be neutral. You know, Ooh. you have to be as objective as possible. Ooh. Otherwise, you do crappy art. You know. Ooh. That's really what I learned. Right. You know. Can you like give me an example of this? Like because when when you anti something, then you're already following some uh, assessments yours. Then you're already pro something or against something. Oh. But that's not uh, what you want to do. You know, you want to try to find your own path. And when you find your own path, it's not really being pro or anti. It just is. It just is, and it's right. You know, it's yeah. right what you're doing. And then you're not anti anyone because you don't have real enemies or friends. Like it's. It's just your path. That is so zen. It's totally zen, but uh, that's what I understood, you know? Mm -hmm. What the heck? That's not me. <laughs> I would have some guy racing like crazy. But uh, I was so happy when I understood that, you know? Because then you make your peace. And then you also realize... Like P-I-E-C-E -E and P-E-A-C-E? -E. Boom. Uh, the Whoa, we are drink. getting in the meat of it here tonight. Oh, Boom. <laughs> No, because then you realize, like Melissa said, you make your peace with every other artist. Because then you know you you want lose and you want win. Yeah. If everybody once everybody gets there, what they're here for, then they in their essence and they're as good as they can be. You know, and that's why you can't compare anything. You know, if they're really true in their essence, <laughs> exactamente, then you know, then it's yeah. true, and everybody feels that. And then you're not anti and you're not pro. Yeah. Then you're just in your energy and you just go for it. 
Damn. Sorry. <laughs> well, my English might have let's, No, that makes a lot of sense. Let's Perfect. just wrap this up now. It's not going to get better than that. So thanks for watching. Goodbye. Uh, it's been really real. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna drink to that. Fuck the rules. That was, Fuck the rules! That was dope. That was sick. Hell yeah, dude. I'll tell you. Well, that's more right. I'm just gonna. Um. So I literally pets? don't know what to talk about. Yeah, do you have any pets? <laughs> What's that? Pets? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Wow, that's Yeah, I don't know, because uh, I'm not very good at taking care of pets. I had some pets as a child, and I was never very good. <laughs> Oh, no. Do you want to hear I have a hard time or? taking care of myself, so I don't. <laughs> and I have a son, seven years old. So that's enough to take care of. Yeah. And earn some money and stuff. And do art and try to keep up a relationship for what Or two. No. Oh, well. <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah. Um, what else? Hmm. What, um, so you made some pieces where you poured wax into the ocean? Ah, uh, yeah, that's when I, because <clears throat> first I, because I always look for new materials, and then I found the, I thought, ah, oh, why not, because my son came home from the kindergarten, and they did some little wax, kind of wax object for Christmas, where they dripped wax and water, and I thought, oh, that's cool, I could do something with wax, and then I started playing around with wax, and I had a show in Armenia in a museum, and then I poured some <coughs> wax objects during the opening, but in paint buckets. So they turned out really nice. I colored the wax in blue and red, but then I poured them, I melted the wax, and I poured them in the buckets, and then they had the frames of the buckets. So they had like three vol mm. volume, vol volume, yeah, volume. Mm -hmm. volume in the middle, but then they also showed the outside frame. And of course, that is there a frame? Because I want to have the total freedom. I don't want to have any uh, boundaries mm -hmm. in everything I do. Also, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's real life. That's a different, <laughs> different topic. It also <laughs> sounds like a, a painting also, too, with a frame, with, or like a platform, or a. Or yeah. A when I always think when you act in a frame, then you have to stay inside the frame. Then you can't pretend the frame isn't out there. Mm -hmm. Either I go totally without the frame. So I do public stuff, or once I work on a canvas, which is limited, then I really work on the canvas. Then I don't try to break out the canvas, otherwise I would do it in reality and mm -hmm. not. So um, anyway, with the wax, so I yeah, then I saw the, the boundary, and then I thought it would be so cool to find a possibility to just uh, do the same action but change the location. So it's really. You know, so then, because I always work with this positive and negative. Where do I end? Where do I start? You know, and how does the outside, the negative or the positive, whatever is the positive, whatever is the negative, how does that influence each other, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I thought it's so cool once the outside is so big that the positive or the positive, I just call it positive now, the art piece can develop as it wants to. And then I came up with the idea of pouring this wax into flowing waters all over the world, like pour it into tiny rivers, big rivers, lakes, seas, and oceans. Mm -hmm. And that was so cool because then it was just formed by the dimension of the flowing water and the current weather situation. And I thought that was so cool. So, that is so yeah. cool. Because it's so open, you know, it's, it can be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the idea of, um, of like an infinite negative space like yes. in terms of casting and stuff yes yeah. and when you think of that because uh, because uh, then it makes the it's so hard to explain because when you see these objects they're so fragile and they don't look totally out of place when you look at them they look so very fragile mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but in their space where they started to, uh, to grow to exist they were so right at that time but when then you take them in our <laughs> In our on our planet, you know, and they look so out of place, but they have such a perfect system inside themselves. Especially if you look at them with a magnifying glass or something, because mm -hmm. they are so fragile. And then, but I I like that because they're totally free. You know, yeah. of course they're not that big. They're like this big or so. Because I choose the one kilogram that's about two point two pounds, 
of beeswax, but they, that's a good size to tend for it because they, they end up in cardboard boxes like that. And then I have them basically on my lap during yeah. the flight the whole time. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah cause you can't, I can't send them or ship yeah. them, you know. I oh, always wow. have them on my lap on every plane ride. Oh, I bring wow. home a wax object basically. <laughs> oh, work. Big work. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So they always travel the wrong. They'd need like a courier, like a very but careful I, courier <laughs> if you ever ship them. Yeah. yeah. They're like my babies. And it's almost like a really giving birth to a child because you pour this hot wax into the cold water and then it's like a spill of their own existence, you know? Okay. It's so cool because they like, a, it's like you a just create them and then they freeze, but in the middle they're still like pulsating and hot, you know? So sometimes when the weather is really hot and the water surface is really warm, you really have to leave, leave them in there for five minutes to, and you have to wait till they cool off. So you can actually pull them out of the water, otherwise the, the liquid wa uh, wax is just running down. Whoa! <laughs> Stop doing that! <laughs> it's like, it's so you know, but it's it's a bit because you it feels like you're getting a baby out of a you know it's like you're really creating it a creature soft. and they look like little creatures because they are yeah. they like inherent systems they like totally <clears throat> perfect you know yeah yeah even though they look so odd. And they're so fragile, they so out of place, you know. Yeah. They're so fragile. It it's, is weird to see them like on a gallery floor. Yeah, because you think, what the heck is that? You can't even capture them with your vision, and you can't understand them because the boundaries are so, so it's messed like up. You so know, many different dimensions. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you really can't even uh, visually. You can't really uh, understand them visually. Mm -hmm. And intellectually, you also really can because you think, what the heck is that thing doing? Mm -hmm. How does that look? And you know, but that's what I like so much because they're so they capture there are so many because they mix up this boundary stuff, you know? They, yeah, they're somewhere in between. Yeah, they're not really a boundary, but they also not they're not the positive, they're not the negative, they're somewhere, you know? Oh. It's that's so romantic. I love yeah. when you talk about them, that's so adorable. <laughs> Uh, let's get back to Lindsay that I gave her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, are you, are you Mercy? You press the button. Yeah, yeah but I love my little creatures. Oh, thank you. But all of this stuff, because they're all like little creatures. Mm -hmm. Well, what else? What else feels like little creatures? Also the paintings, mm -hmm. like my ice cream paintings. Because mm -hmm. they also grow together. You have to tell me when I think it's only oh, it's winter time. Oh my god, you guys <laughs> taking it to the next level. What is that? The beat is open. <laughs> <laughs> right though? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. What the heck? <laughs> Incoming. Somebody. No, it's Japanese or about their fallacies. I'm not even making that up. This is Japanese festival though. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, it's probably, it's, park. Park. it's probably like there's just, statues. There's, there's a statues. pickle festival in New York. That's a real thing. No, no phallus intended. Just straight up pickles. It's like the dead dill. Straight up dill. You get your dill. Dill and get your all dilled up. But also dill. the uh, ice <laughs> to interrupt you with the dill. <laughs> the dill. Never heard that. <laughs> So I want to get a Columbia. Can we get a Columbia hot dog actually? Yeah. Stephanie, you have to have one of these Columbia hot dogs. They're disgusting. Do you They're eat the meat? best. I had a. Somebody took me to. Um, nah, my assistant. No, you it. had it, right? My assistant took me to Dirty Franks. No, no different. different. No. Sorry, Dirty Franks. You're good. But... This is at the taco truck. This is a real hot dog. Mm. This is this is a Columbus tradition. I don't want to say it's a traditional dish because I have no idea what it is, but we believe it's I? important. Melissa and I obsess about it. It's a thing that Melissa you must... obsessed. No, we both obsess in our own way. And Camille. And Cammy. Yeah. Melissa tried to recreate it. I didn't even bother because I knew it was art in <laughs> it's itself. It's impossible. This this taco truck delight. It's the best. There's a it's, there's a lot of nuance. It's um there's a crispy there's a crispy cheese cheese situation. Mm -hmm. There's a hot dog split down the middle and grilled on the grill that's that cooks all the other delicious stuff. So I think it's Richly the bun good. soaks up all that tasty goodness. What are we drinking about? I don't know. Oh. You guys are just talking, so I thought I might as well just <laughs> <laughs> two, two, at least. Thank you. 
if I may interrupt, I just talk about the ice cream maker. Alright, fine. <laughs> we'll pick up this Chloe hot dog discussion later. We'll get back to the hot dog with taste. Just juicy. In just two minutes. Yeah, the ice cream thingies. Anyway, the paintings that I do at the moment. Mm-hmm. They, so you uh, just did the Culture Arts Center, right? No, that was a different one. Because I always uh, like one thing leads to another. Ah, nah? Yeah. And so at the moment, I'm really into material structures and viral structures because I'm so scared of getting cancer and stuff. Ah. Oh, so I thought cancer. I'd just uh, look at that. What? I got yeah. cancer. When I was 19, I got skin cancer. It was in C2, it was chill. NBB. It was you got what? Tumor cancer? In melanoma. So it was localized, which meant that they could cut it out and I didn't have to get surgery or, well, minor surgery, but I didn't have to get like chemo or expensive mm. treatments or anything. It was ideal. Mm. Besides the fact that it was like seriously traumatizing. But, but you have to watch it all the time. Yeah, so now I like keep a close eye on my skin and try to stay out of the sun and stuff. My point being that if you do get cancer, it's, it is something to be anxious about, but not something to like ruin your life. Yeah, it's just because we have so much cancer in our family, you know, my mm. mom's side and dad's side and so on. And all my cousins and shit get cancer, you know, and they that's die sad. and stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's sorry. yeah, that's why I'm a little scared. But I don't like to be scared of stuff, so I thought I just focus on that and my artwork. Yeah, get <laughs> yeah, that so, that way. And I always saw these uh, resemblance of parallels. I don't know if mm-hmm. resemblance yeah, is yeah, the right word. Yeah. Um so I and uh, yeah, I saw the resemblance of uh, of the microcosmos anyway yeah you know before because i paint a lot with ice cubes i never use a paintbrush or a pencil for 10 years now and so i saw all the resemblance and so what did i want to say ah yeah and then i had one kind of thing because in the past i always did ice cube paintings based on pictures mm-hmm. in the past in the last year basically but I'm a little hyperactive when it comes like, to art. I always yeah. jump every year. I have a new big topic mm-hmm. going on, but the, I don't really like to. By pictures, you mean like paintings in a traditional or like pre-modernist style. Is that right? Yeah. Well, not really, because you wanted to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do more. It's hard to explain. It's a little difficult. Wow! Ding, 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 that's good. That's good interview training, actually. We should do that once a week. So <laughs> we yeah, are like, yeah. <laughs> or every time you say um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> deep breath. What did I want to say? Something about um, the ice cube paintings, and before you were basing them off of like. Other paintings. Yeah, before they were based on the photographs of, uh, yeah. like, colorful photographs of other paintings or of other situations, photographs that I took in New York City, they were all colorproof, and then I <laughs> analyzed them and stuff and split them in the CNYK lab, uh, layers and stuff, and that's how I fixed my ice cubes, and then I located them on the canvas with the saturation with the highest. The canvas was always an original size of the painting that mm. I took. That I took a picture of, and so and then, but uh, anyway, how the canvas deals with the water of the ink or whatever of the melting ice cube that reminded so much, uh, me so much of landscapes and water situations, you know, like the fjords and Norway. Oh, yeah, because sometimes yeah. when you because I always use an unframed canvas mm-hmm. or a cotton material, mu- muslin, muslin, so. yeah, and then you see all these uh, similarities, or a few times I used like a fire resistant treated muslin and so they treated it with some kind of salty solution but then when all these ice cubes melt and the water melts uh, or soaks into the cotton uh, it kind of uh, washes out the salty crystals and then Ooh. the salty crystals start to end up like landscape shapes Ooh, you know? uh, and it's so cool it's totally and organic. Then, yeah yeah and then i always thought i saw the parallels and the resemblance between the landscape and an ocean you know like how it shapes one thing shapes the other mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then i had this one piece that was based on a portrait of somebody a black and white portrait and then it turned out like a paramecium like these uh, singular, what's a paramecium it's a singular cell single cellular organism 
they like really tiny. They look like call them pantopic lichens. <laughs> they call paramecium. That's I guess a Latin name. But they are like this shape and they single cellular organisms. Ooh. And then I totally got into this microcosmos stuff. Wow. And then I saw all these cool um, connections because I always thought in the past I always located myself, you know, based on the colors and stuff. And then I thought, how about to work on the composition now, you know? And then mm. I saw all these awesome compositions of these viruses and bacteria yeah. that I'm so scared of. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I got so fascinated with it. And then I, I looked at tons of pictures on the internet and then I wrote them all down. Like I used these kind of, what's it called? Blood? Blood? No, the paper that you put on your, when you write with fresh ink and then you put a paper. Blotting. Blotting paper. Blotting paper. Blotting paper. Yeah. And then I used a so ink pen to do the sketches on that and then I hung them all over my studio all the compositions that I found and then I made up my own compositions and those compositions that's what I used to for the newest compositions of my paintings you know they're all based on bacterial mm -hmm. or viral structures I also looked at cancer cells and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so that's what they're all based on because I got totally into these compositions because uh, because of this micro Cosmo, I guess, yeah, I lost the translation now, but like if you okay. look at it, I used to, a lot of pictures of these. Sorry, we're counting that. Nah. <laughs> of the scanning electron microscope. Mm. I had to look that word up. You know, oh, I love that shit. Oh, me too, me too, because I looked at it and then you see the, used the, rose, the rose leaves. Like a rose leaf is actually made out of tiny, tiny octillion rose leaves, you know? Oh, really? That, that, that that tiny, the tiny form of it looks like it's a big form, oh, you know? No. And when I saw oh, that, I thought, so what the heck? Because that's what I already knew, just based and on my own. the petals are kind of like that, too. And this is so Wait, cool, why? you know? What? Like, I don't know, just the way the petals fall into each other. Oh, yeah, it, that's It's also kind of like a fractal, right? Yeah. What? And that's totally what I understand with my artwork. Right it's like when I'm in my studio, I... Uh, I use my artwork kind of to understand the world, but in my yeah. own speed and with my own techniques, you know. And this is so there it is. cool. <laughs> but this is so cool. Boys you know? and girls. And and then and you understand it all, you know. You understand religion, philosophy, you understand everything. And that's the whole that's the best part of it. That is the best part. Because then you see all these parallels and everything. And that's uh, that's like yeah. the that's a Zen moment, you know? And that's why you can't be anti any artist, you know, or a pro, or yeah. everybody just does his own. Uh... Oh, God. I'm <laughs> so tired. I like it. I almost have a list of seven for me, because this is like the fourth one today, and I'm just like, oh, this is too much. For this. this is so heavy. Did you just say, oh? <laughs> I, I think she did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> They did. Sorry. Yeah. No, thank you. Kind of <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. But that's so cool. You got this. It's all going in. I'm not even tired. I'm not even tired. <laughs> and that's the cool part about it. <laughs> you know, you just get that in your studio. Yeah, that's And then you can believe. even go you on with drinks to get high. Go on no, without no. food. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like long studio hours, no food, just, just like. Oh man, it's just that then you're then you're getting into that Zen Buddhist garbage. It's like sitting under a tree. Not garbage, I'm sorry. You know what I mean. Good stuff. Tree good stuff. Like the good 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 stuff. But then you realize that's your road. And you're not wasting energy. You're just getting in. in the what? Yeah. yeah. You're like next level. That's the that, but then you know you're right. When yeah. you get energy. Then you know. Yeah. When you're just not like it just like fuels you, so that's good. That's how I feel when I talk about media. Maybe maybe I'm totally flipping this on the so sad. Wait, no, no, no. no. Oh, sorry. Oh, I okay. just pressed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this is a good button. Let me see if you just play this. Maybe it populated the right different way. No, like I get really jazzed when I talk about movies. Yeah, I don't want to play this one. I get really jazzed when I talk about like movies and TV. So that's the only time I get energy. So like, that's a that's a clue. Yeah, that I should be doing that. That that's a direction. If you're interested in it, if you're gonna have energy in that in that direction, so it's like you want to pick that. Yeah. And then as soon as you're like done with that, you'll like realize it. And you're like, I'm done with this. I don't have any more energy for this. 
time for the next thing. Because it's like there's no one thing necessarily. I'm it's like to, yeah, where I'm you, still naive enough to try to find the one thing. But also like when you think about it now, you're thinking of an idealized version of what it is that you're interested in. You don't <laughs> even know it yet. You don't know what it is that you're you know what I mean? Like it's new so you don't know the you're interested in the idea of it and so you have so what happens is you can go into it to find out if it's actually gonna give you energy. If it gives you energy now and you have an interest, you should be thinking about that. But like from the previous episode. Sorry, because you're on camp. <laughs> My knee is almost We've cool. now, now it's, we have two drinks in the thing, so. Um, I mean, in a way, it's just really about, mm-hmm. like, following your, mm. your heart. Turn on your heart light. Don't apologize. Is it? Don't apologize for anything. Is that from E.T.? What? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah. And that, and I would like to think that, um, I can think, I would like to think that when I am thinking about media, I am able to frame things or give gen- or, um, new ideas in a way that helps other people or gives other people other ideas that are good. Yeah. Yeah. You so. can do that in every field. So it's, mm-hmm. if that's the field that you feel comfortable or you gravitate towards, then that's. Where you, you know, if you can go there. Okay. I think the hardest part is when you, like just now, you know, when you do your stuff and then you see other people selling their stuff, you know. I mean, it's fun. I did so many performances, you know, and it's nice the first time, but after a while, when you see how much effort you put into it, and then I clean up all the shit every <laughs> time, you know, for days and days and days. And then after a while, and, so and everybody tells me, this is great. But you never get any money out of it. Like, so I would like to live. At too. some point, after three years, you ask yourself, "What the heck am I doing here?" Mm-hmm. You know, all the other artists paint these nice little paintings, and they sell the stuff too. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, not to rip on like, like that's the hustle. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't. It's I try hustle. not to. I try not to talk shit about anybody's hustle. Not that I'm trying to write you or anything, but I'm just like, after working, I've only worked freelance for two years, and I'm already like. Do do whatever you gotta do as long as you're not hurting other people yeah. to make that money. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I'm just saying that's a that's just a personal experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, at some point you get you always get to that point again where you see other people selling all this stuff, you know. And then of course at some point, especially when you're insecure at the beginning, you ask yourself, Up is that drink. <laughs> 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 I don't have any you beer left. <laughs> I'm the German. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> then you ask yourself, is it really worth it, you know? You always work your ass off. And everybody tells you, oh, this is so great. Thanks you. So, uh, thank you so much for doing this. And you think, yeah, I know. It's great. You know? <laughs> That's so funny. I would like to buy bread now. I would like to pay my rent. <laughs> so, you know? so your solution was to like, but still, I I'm still doing it. That it's not like you. <laughs> but you're, you're also like putting those performances on canvas, so you can sell the canvas. Yeah, but that's only for two years now, you know. Uh, so Before I did, didn't didn't do anything of it because I I was totally anti. Mm-hmm. I thought now is now. I was totally into the Zen thing. Yeah. Now. See, temporary. that's that's like part of the um. I'm recently I'm like really pissed with the Fight Club, mystique. And uh, Ooh. ethos and oh, that might have been me. Wait, what's Fight Club? Is that you? No, no, it's just, you I know was the just movie wondering Fight Club? This, yeah, is yeah. that like Do you know the movie? Somewhere? Yeah, yeah. How like uh, like when people are teenagers, they're like, yeah, that's what we should do. We should blow up banks, or they're well, oh, they're, people don't yeah. really say that, but people are like so completely Buy anti-establishment it. in that way, or like look to that narrative as a way of being anti-establishment, and it's just like totally unfeasible for somebody. For community building. It's, like, not sustainable for community building. And it doesn't make any extra cash. And it doesn't, I mean, if you're blowing up the bank that has records on their student loans, I'm not going to complain, but, okay. uh... Still doesn't stop student loans from happening. Yeah. And it doesn't stop the problem with the system. Yeah. And so, like, Liz and I have been talking about what, um, motherhood means in a sense of, like, community making and community nurturing and stuff like not necessarily reproducing and not necessarily um a woman focused sort of idea right right and it would be nice if we had like 
anarchic ideas and narratives around community care rather than self-care because um i think that's another byproduct of like our toxic masculinity in our culture is to focus on the self and the ego rather than focusing on something greater than oneself and focusing on like sustaining something greater than oneself that kind of, yeah. that kind of happens with shit yeah just got lost in the view yeah okay, I'm sorry. you're like no, wait what <laughs> i'm sure you've heard me yeah, but it's it's like a giving it's a giving hey, work. versus taking like how can like sometimes I feel like community can be can we get all of this in here okay. I'm gonna lead in so oh sorry uh, these these these, yeah, these tell these, me more about these postmodern <laughs> chairs are are too roomy why hello um <clears throat> and now I forgot what I was doing so okay, first of all, okay, so commute, like, yes, it's like, um, on that note, mm-hmm. I think that it, as you get, um, a lo- as you, as you figure what you like to do, I think it gets easier to then see how it, uh, scratch that. I don't know what I'm talking about. I be- basically, when you're talking about community, sometimes I have, like, I used to do more community projects, and sometimes community can be reiterative and, and, and this can you speak up and toward the computer? Yeah, some. This one? <laughs> no, toward the computer. Okay. The mic's in the computer. Okay, I'm going to lean this way and talk that way. So, one thing about community is they can, it can become reiterative and, and, uh, and want sameness. And so I think that is one good thing about, like, if you blend community and art sometimes. Not like community arts, but that art can, can help. Um, facilitate across different communities. I think, and I think that's an interesting thing to think about. Earlier, I was talking with Amory Kessler about like art washing and the danger in do- in what I heard and what in the words that you said, but I don't know that that's what you're talking about. So can you like elaborate on that? Instead? Yeah, I just I have a little bit of a problem with like the idea of community. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Basically, <laughs> what I'm saying is fuck everybody. Like, I think you, I think community is like important, but like in art, a lot of times it gets leveraged for social tasks. Ah, so yes, agreed. And and yeah. it's almost like um, subconscious on so many levels, and you see it as well as many other things get leveraged for social capital and relationship to. <laughs> the idea of like making change and, and things like this and I, I like I think it's important that people do these things but also like what is if you really want to make an effect you gotta look at what's the most effectual act and so what is the most effectual act versus like what's the most idealized act and the most the act yeah. that's, that's more showy versus the act that's actually more Fucking functional preach, dude. so I mean I think I see a lot of discrepancy in in the performativity of community mm-hmm. and in the actual community mm-hmm. We're like, do you, so what is community? What do we want our community? Do we want to just really be like insular and circular, circle our cat, our wagons, or do we want to mm-hmm. go out of our community and like expand our, expand mm-hmm. what it is that you have to other communities? And mm-hmm. so I always have this little bit of a hang up, and I feel like that's I appreciate. Yeah, that. I have a little bit of like I'm always looking at the complexities of of, of the idea of community. So and I um. I I think I'm reading some old Donna Haraway right now, and so that's what I'm thinking about when I think about like deconstructing the idea of what a family and community can be, and reconstructing that in in, uh, a queer cybernetic sense. I'm using the word queer. I don't think Haraway really uses that word. Yeah. Um, But it's like make your own, make your own family. Yeah. 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 And specifically, her she has a lot of hangups around the nuclear family and more. Yeah. So. Specifically yeah. deconstructing what that can be. Yeah. And I think we're so beyond the nuclear family. That I think we are. I mean, no, I just don't know. I love it. But what were you going to say? I, I think in the art, it feels like we are. But I think it's it's like, I just always worry when things get really insular. I guess. Mm-hmm. See, I, I think I, in art, we try to be, but then we end up perpetuating these habits and these patterns of failed communities. Or, like, yeah. failed anarchist collectives, or, like, failed cults, or, like, all these failed things. Yeah, it gets, it gets, that's why I think if you just make what you, what you want, avoid 
complexity of but being true to oneself and figuring out what you're doing and like yeah that that's and knowing a lot to the ask impl- of a lot of people and then knowing the implication of everything that you're doing if you if you use like if you're a filmmaker and use actors you have to then think of like every every like um cultural reference like you just have to think through who you're using in your work like if you're if you're talking about mothers you have to think about people who are mothers of of, of children who have died you can't just think about mothers of children who have children you, can, you have to think of like every level of motherhood. You can't just think of one idealized level of motherhood. But then you also have to think about the fact that women's only value has been in their motherhood. Mm-hmm. So why? So how do you reframe that? Mm-hmm. So, and then like how much responsibility do you feel like you should have to have in that? So it's like you don't want to deny well, the yourself. Filmmakers, filmmakers like to deny their responsibility, like especially in our core theory, they're d- denying like responsibility in in. Many, many levels. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and you, there's a lot where you can, like, the system, you can you can explain that this, this is a system. And I have to work within this system and that system. Um, but I think, I don't know, it's all, everything's complicated. It is complicated. <laughs> and it takes a lot of thinking. But I think that if you, if you do choose your subject, you're going to, if you choose whatever subject that you're, like, gravitate towards, you're going to, you'll flush it out and you find the nuance and all. Like, and there's and it a lot always of feels nuance. insecure. It's always, I mean, that's it when, when you feel insecure, then it means you're on the right track. Yeah. If you know what you're doing, then you're not on the right track. Then it's like, and you have to, it likely. has to feel like, oh, it's my first steps. Oh, oh man. Oh. Come on. Oh, man. I drank already. Thank you. It's like a little bit of a questioning too, always. Like, I think it's always a questioning. I'm, yeah. I'm really scared of didactic thought and speech. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, because you really. I mean, I the more uncomfortable it feels, the more true you are. Like, yeah. You know, it's, it's, I don't know if it's well, too, that, too dominant to talk. Uh, like, but I don't know. Yeah, too direct. Can questions. you can you tease out that idea of comfort? Because like. I wonder if people might get confused if, like, being comfortable with the work and the way you're making your work being conflated with the way that you're comfortable with yourself and the ideas that you're teaching out. Do you know what I mean? Am I making sense? I mean, you're when you're comfortable, then you're on the wrong path. <laughs> I would. That's what I. Would well, you. Say. That's where, like, if it's the community always... is comfortable, they have completely locked in to everyone that's in there. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because then you're it's... comfortable and everyone mm. agrees. So then you're not at the essence. Then you're not really. Aware and you of... lose nuance. So yeah. it's because then you already found a group that supports you, and we all say, agree. This is what we believe, and we're all gonna lock it in. That's that's a tricky part of being an artist or like working in the arts and stuff. You know, all kinds of uh, 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 professions like filmmaking, painting, performative, sculpture, but everything. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's the hard part to stay true. You know, like the I think. Yeah. Because that feels so uncomfortable. Yeah, and to yeah. last there, because that can drive you crazy. Yeah, and that's why it drives so many people crazy because it's so fucking hard <laughs> to stay on that little <laughs> the, the <laughs> path of being true to yourself. That am I understanding you correctly? Yeah, kind of. I don't yeah, because you don't know the yeah. way. You don't. You don't know the ways. You don't know the right. Direction. So it's a, it's uncomfortable while at the same time you know it's like right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uncomfortable, and you don't know. And also, it's like, like juggling, or like you're walking on a. You have, how do you call it? Tight rope. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Because you, you could, could offend off. a lot of people yeah. on this side, and you can offend. Yeah. There's like then, like if we're staying on the community thing, it's like, and then who are the people who make work like you? You know, you could just be completely isolated, but it's just you have to just do. And also, it Indian, becomes like a little bit Indian, complicated. Indian, if you have a, like a group that supports you totally, but that's the easy way, you know. Yeah. If yeah. you know you have a lot of fans already, then it's easy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but if you, you don't like have anything, right then you still. I um, have an idea. Did you win? Oh. Yeah. So I mentioned Donna Haraway before. Recently, she's come under criticism for um, espousing um, a. Um, she thinks that humans should stop reproducing because it's unsustainable on the earth and the earth's ecology, which is like a fair point. Right. But the way that she makes that point edges on the, um, on the borders of eugenics, which are inherent ideas that are like 
inherently and traditionally racist and classist and stuff. And she does not address that part of her idea, and she does not address the negative implications of her ideas. Whereas, like, in the past, specifically, I'm reading uh, Cyborg Manifesto right now, in the past she has um, criticized white feminism, and she has advocated for, like, POC feminism, and, like, listening to women of color and stuff. And I think what happens is that with older intellectuals, they stop interrogating their ideas as thoroughly as they used to, and I think people also, once they gain that clout and that respect and that, like, social in, 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 in millennial jargon, that, like, social capital, then they, um, then they, their ideas become weaker, and then they come under criticism and under fire for these ideas because they didn't, I think, my theory is that they didn't do their due diligence to interrogate those ideas. I don't know if that's because, like, they're resting on their clout. I doubt that's the case. I think it's more like people just aren't, like, giving them the feedback that they used to. And also they just say, they may just think they're right. And, and maybe that. I mean, I don't know what it's like to be a person of Haraway's age, but um, I don't know if that could also, like, in, impact the way that she thinks. I think if you accomplish a... something, you know, if you accomplish something really big, then you already feel so, Whoa, okay, I worked this out for humanity, you know? Yeah. And then like at some I'm point done. you're out of it. Well, then and then writing. the next, uh, the next star, uh, person comes up. Yeah, it's and like, that's I fine. have a feeling like everybody can just accomplish a certain amount in their lives. You know? yeah. yeah. And then the next person steps up. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe then, of course, the people who try to act like they would accomplish a bunch of stuff or be revolutionary all the time. Yeah. Like, it's cool that you were revolutionary in the 80s. Like, it's awesome that a cyborg manifesto, yeah. like, meant a lot to so many people. And it still means a lot to so many people. Like, rest on those laurels. Mm. Like, that's great. Yeah, yeah. But then that doesn't... So you you much, can't accomplish anything, you know? You, everybody has just a certain amount of... Accom at some point, you're, you're done. I don't think you're... I don't well, know. I mean, it's, you know, it's like... You can just get out of touch with me. <laughs> And it doesn't have to do with age, it has to do yeah. with, like, having, I think it does have to do with, like, fame. Sometimes, like, fame can get you out of touch with reality and make you think that you can say anything that comes off your head. And mm -hmm. But the the problem is that people will actually, like, listen to you and, and think that that's Especially maybe true. In, in and then question, question. Yeah, when you have authority or something. Yeah, like, then it's not the becomes, anymore. like, a Bible. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. the fact that the Bible is so, I mean, mm. so, but, like, your, your dogma, yeah. Yeah. And then it becomes believed because you have the credibility, you believe your own credibility, and then other yeah, people yeah. believe your credibility. And then you have your fans already and stuff. So it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's happening. Because then you're not as brave anymore. You don't go to these edgy points anymore. Then you're already like, you get smaller. And then you, you're still going to work something out, but it's just in this tiny area. It's not the big Ooh. thing anymore. Also, that's my, also my understanding of like, getting a doctorate and being an academic is to try to push the boundary of one tiny little space in human knowledge. But there's a difference between, like, pigeonholing yourself and, like, focusing on something. I mean, things change Pigeon year by year. That's the thing. That's what, like, sometimes older... Ac like, sometimes people get stuck in, like, a certain thought process that's rooted in a older thought and they... And there's a co constant and continuous changing situation. That's why I feel like younger people are always like a little bit more on it with ideas like that. Like, I don't think I don't want to be ageist though. Like I don't, I, I don't want to be ageist either. But I think that I mean I feel like I'm I try to escape those traps. But like I feel like people who feel really secure in one way of thinking lock it in. They sometimes they think oh this is the key. Here's the method, and this is how you are a per this, and this is how you're that, and and here's here's the methodology let's literally write that down and make a like a document i'm yeah, gonna tell you here's the 10 ways to be a xyz or whatever and then they just like i figured it out because you're uncomfortable i mean it's uncomfortable and they when you're at that other point it's so uncomfortable you can hardly stand it you know yeah i think that's the point because you and you're everybody wants to get out of that uncomfortable situation yeah and yeah. then at some point i think lots of people are like oh, i got it Okay, I can go this, this far, is, but I can't yeah. go any further. Yeah. And that's when they start to do this, uh, how do you call it, mentor thing, or mm -hmm. when they're preaching something, you the know. Yeah. 
And they can do that yeah. all the way to the past, like the stuff that they did ahead of time, but they can't preach in the future. Yeah, exactly. It's just what they understood till then. Yeah. But the rest is... I mean, everything has to they be stopped in flux moving, because so. things constantly are in flux. From last year to this year, things are just completely in flux. Like, there's just so many new things and different things to think about. So it's... You can't, there is no one way to do anything, and you have to also look at where people are from, so many different backgrounds and experiences, and you can't like make a rule or a dogma or a, this is how we're this way, and this is how we're left, and this is how we're right, and it, it makes no sense. So it's just really mm. always just like ev- endlessly confusing me. Anyone who like says, This is how you're a this, and this is how you can be a good that, and a, and this is how. Uh, to be in the community, mm. you need to make words like this or talk about mm. this. And we're like, all agree queer about looks this. Like this or queer trans looks, looks like, like this. this. Trans is like this. Yeah. If you're mm. if you're gonna, you know, you dress this way, and it's just like dress, you, you see it forming. Like yeah, you see it forming like, like automatically. Yeah. And like my current pet, pe- I have like many pet peeves about this. So I'm just feel like I just don't like when people try to narrow things down to like an ideal. Or like a formula, and I'm like, there's never a formula because every minute the formula changes. I feel like that's also what fails about like collectives is that if you aren't accommodating yeah. that change, and if you aren't in a process of constant self reflection yeah, and yeah. constant improvement, I mean, the same goes for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then like you're gonna fall yeah. behind or like fall yeah. apart. Yeah. But that's the same with your own artwork. I mean, yeah. you do something and you know it's only right in this moment that's why i love the in process the you yeah. know these live events that i did because yeah. they were changing constantly yeah they were always true because they were only in that moment you know yeah that's yeah. why i love so much and that's why i had such a hard time to go to canvases because mm-hmm. then when you the it's a edge. still mm-hmm. there's no uh forward backward mm-hmm. anymore mm-hmm. but i kind of like the stuff because it's uh, still tells about it uh, we can re- still read the process yeah. of it so it's still uh, still tells the story of its own uh, existence yeah where it comes from and so yeah. and then it's about this moment that you captured on the canvas so. yeah, yeah. but i mean that's the thing like even as an artist if you say something it's always just at that very moment that's the truth yeah. at that very moment and not 100 years further and, and not that, for anybody you know, else either it's like yeah. your truth so it's just at like, that time it was the truth yeah at that very moment it was the truth yeah but then and I, I also feel like i and that's what i am touching and that's what i'm Seeing in like a cyborg manifesto is that that is a peak of that person's work at that point in time under those yes, conditions, exactly. and that's why it's such an excellent piece. Yeah. I just thought yeah. about your movie and there's stuff no guarantee. too, because of course a movie is constantly uh, when you capture something on a film, mm. it's that very moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's even more. Um, yeah, it's like that, that little moment. I can't express point. it in English. And let's wrap moment. up this moment because that was the realest shit that you're probably maybe ever going to see on the show. Thank you very much. So this is what I hope the show would be. And I'm really happy that it played out in this episode. And I'm thankful for all y'all to be here. Yay, we'll probably you. get a few more controllers so we can have conversations like this more often. Because this was awesome. I really care about you guys. Here, you drink this. I don't want this. Ching, ching. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and for um, bearing with the changing camera and stuff. And thank you for Stephanie for being being willing to like play a game. I really and Melissa, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, y'all have fun. Be safe and um, call an Uber. <laughs> okay.